Hey guys, Rod here, Jetboard Australia. Welcome back to the site. Uh, today we've got some workshop stuff to do. So uh, what we have here is a DFI JetSurf engine, late model one. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out the, the clutch assembly on that. We're gonna go through all the different sizes and styles of clutch that uh, JetSurf have had over the years. There's actually three different types, but we'll get into that a little later. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull this down, check it out. This particular motor is out of a board because uh, we're doing some uh, carbon fiber repairs on the board. So the customer's asked us to check out the clutch and we'll actually do a top end overhaul on it, but we'll do that in another video. But this one's all about the clutches. So um, I'll line this camera up a bit better and uh, we'll get into pulling it apart. Okay, so here it is. So this is the 100cc uh, DFI. You can see by the fuel injection in the uh, transfer port there. Um, so what we're gonna do, we'll get this cover off, get into the clutch and uh, show you what it's all about. So let's get started. So. Uh, first you need 2.5 Allen key, pretty simple, we'll just whip that cover off. The good thing about these late model plastic ones, the screws actually stand the plastic, so it all stays in one piece, that's, uh, that's handy, so get that out of the way. So okay, so what you've got in here, you've got your, what they call their main gear, inside there is a one-way bearing, or we call starter clutch, or some people will call a spray clutch. Then from there, we have the idler gear, and of course the starter motor and starter motor gear. So to get this uh, main gear off, we need to remove the idler gear. So uh, simple process again, uh, we'll just get a, uh, another Allen key there just to, to stick in. And this just stops the gears from rotating. So that lets me get in there and undo the Allen key there. So once that's undone, we can get that out of the way. And Whip that off, and then the gear, just a little wriggle. It's on a little square, as you'll see. It's on a square, sits on there, and that gets it out of the way. So cool, and that gives you access now to get into your main gear assembly. So then from there, we get, uh, what is it, 32 millimeter socket, and my Jetso special tool. That holds the coupling at the back. One thing we can do just uh, before we start, I should go through that, is to test these bearings. Now this bearing is working quite happily in the ski, or in the board I should say. Um, so all we need to do is check it. So see how it's freewheeling quite comfortably that way, and then we turn it that direction, it's locking, and you can just see it's locking really well. So that's, that's working as it should, so I don't know if you can see it there. You can turn that, and that's locking as it should. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this end cover off. Uh, now we've tested that clutch works correctly. Um, if the clutch isn't working right, uh, obviously what will happen is, is this will freewheel both directions. So it will spin that way or that way, or what they can do is they can actually lock up. So uh, as you're turning the flywheel, the crankshaft turns and, and, and it'll turn in both directions together. Um, so what you're looking for, as I said, is nice and smooth one way and locking the other. Uh, if it's uh, locked or freewheeling, you're in trouble. So anyway, let's get this little cover off. We'll just use our iron key again, just lock it there in between the, the crank cases. And we'll get our 32 mil socket and undo that. That's just on an O-ring, they're not terribly tight. You can generally undo them by hand once you get that out of the way. So a little cap there. Uh, should have some grease in the end, a little dry, so it's good that we're doing that. Uh, there's a little O-ring on there that seals it, so we'll keep a look, look out for that. We'll give that a little bit of a wipe there. See what we're up to. So you can see the bearing in there. Uh, it all looks on reasonable condition, which is great. Now, if you pull that cap off and it's all black and nasty, you know, you've got issues. So next step from that, we'll use our um, special jet surf tool. This goes on the crank like that. And as you can see, it just sits on the crank like that. Now, if you don't have one of these tools, uh, one of those big square blade screwdrivers or uh, a bit of bar or something will do the job, but I've got the right tool, makes life easier. So I put that down on hard on the bench, and then we use a 3.5 mil Allen key this time, which goes in there, and then we'll hold that all down, and then we'll undo it from there. So that one was not too bad. Sometimes they're quite tight, so uh, when we reassemble this, we'll put some Loctite on that, very important that it doesn't come off. So that's it there, there's your little screw assembly. And now that gear should just slide off. There you go. And as you can see, the crankshaft looks in really good condition. Uh, the bearing and the, uh, the sprag clutch or one-way bearing looks good. Uh, yeah, 
nice, and that's in good condition. So all we'll do with that, we'll give that a clean up, re-grease it and reassemble it. So uh, I'll go and give that a clean up out the back. Uh, we'll get the crankshaft a little wipe down here. Let's inspect that. So what we're looking for in the crankshaft is obviously grooves and wear in the crankshaft. Now I run my finger over that, that's beautiful and smooth. Uh, there's no grooves or gouges in it, uh, so that's in that's in lovely condition. The other thing you want to check while you're there is you've got your main bearings inside. Now, if you look in through through the gap there, you'll see your main bearing, and if you rotate, you'll still turn. Just make sure the ball bearing and cages are all in place. I have seen some of these clutches fail. The seal that's in the back of the clutch comes apart and ends up into the main bearing, and it destroys the plastic uh, bearing race that's in there. And then what happens is the balls in the uh, cage come loose and the bearings obviously not stable and it gets all out of, out of shape and, and of course eventually fails. So um, just check that while you're at it. That looks in good nick too, which is great. Good news for the customer. So what I'll do, I'll go and get that a clean um, and I'll show you uh, how to grease it up and then we'll uh, put it back on again. Okay, so I've given that uh, a little clean in my parts washer at the back. I uh, just washed all the old grease and whatnot out of it. So we, we see the seal is, uh, is in reasonable condition there, which is good. Uh, the clutch bearing is all in one piece, and then the little bearing on the end is nice. So all that needs is a grease. So how we do that, uh, and grease is important with this. So what we do is uh, I use a EP2 grease, uh, very similar to the grease they recommend from the factory. The reason I use the Suzuki EP2 grease, it's the marine grease, so it's water resistant. Uh, it has lithium in it and soap, so it's nice and slippery but it's designed for extreme pressure, which that's what EP stands for, EP2, uh, waterproof marine grease. So that's what I use and I find that we have a, we have a good run with that. So um, we'll get uh, a bit of a squirt of that and stick it in around the seal and then the bearing there. And I'll get my screwdriver. And basically what you want to do is work that grease into that bearing. It goes down inside there like that. and then get it in around the seal lip because that's got a seal. So this seal here at the back seals the crankcase uh, from the clutch. So uh, if the, uh, this seal fails, what happens is, is the, the grease gets pushed out of the clutch um, and obviously runs through the engine and disappears out the exhaust. Uh, and then of course it runs dry. So we'll just pack that full of grease there like that. So that's, uh, that's good. So that's sorted there. So that's ready to go back on. What I should do while I'm here, I'll just show you just quickly what's inside there. So, this is, uh, this is what's in there. So this is your one-way bearing. So you'll see it's in a, in a little press cage. It has a roller bearing either end and the one-way bearing in the center. Uh, it has the support bearing on the front and the seal on the back. Now, these kits you can't buy from JetSurf. Um, I'll go through a little bit what they're all about in a minute, but that's give you an idea what's inside there. So what we're going to also do is uh, we're going to put a bit of grease also on the seal inside here, because obviously this doesn't get lubricated with anything but the, um, the two-stroke oil in the engine. So we'll put a little bit of grease around there help that uh, seal. Not too much, you get too much grease here, it'll end up in the, in the engine, it could foul the plug, so just a little bit around there. I'll put a little bit on the, on the shaft as well. And that's got that sorted. So that's ready to go back on. So it's simply a matter of uh, sliding that back into place. Excess grease comes out the end there, get rid of that. So, all right, so what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll clean up this little bolt that holds it all together. And we'll get some Loctite. So here we go, this is the right Loctite. So it's Loctite uh, 243, uh, which is the blue stuff. So we'll uh, put a bit on there. If you're really fussy about it, you can actually clean the thread with some some whoops that's way too much there we go and we'll put that back into there what 
glue. Clean up my mess, my Loctite away. Alrighty, I'll do that back up. So again, we need our special tool. But obviously this time, it needs to go around the other way. I'll tighten that up. Now, it doesn't have to be super tight, but you don't want to come on undone. Coming undone's bad. So that's it there. And all right, and then we'll do, we'll just wipe the cap out. Make sure the O-ring and that's all right. In there. And we'll put that on there. So that bearing gets hot, the grease and the cap will then flow into the, into the, um, into the bearings and lubricate them. So we'll tighten that back up. And again, that need to be super tight. There you go, done. All right, so that's sorted. Let's put this idle gear back on. Now, it doesn't matter which way that idle gear goes. I like to put it back in the same place because you can see where the gear was there. Um, just line up that square there, push that back in place. A little bit more Loctite again. Nice little fill up. Yep. Sit that in place. Put the Allen key. And tighten that up. And then again, we'll put our other Allen key in the gears just to stop rotating. And then we'll do that up nice and tight. Okay, that's good. So that's all together. It's freewheeling nicely that one way. And if we turn the other way, you can see the clutches. The clutch is working so perfect all right so that's uh that's all you need to do there um i'll put a little bit of spray on the gear assembly you can put grease in it like but it'll just fly off so i just give that a bit of spray uh, i use my inox lenox use it on everything my favorite stuff very very good and then uh just whack this cover back on and that's solved Okay, that job's done. So what we'll do now, um, we'll go through a few of the clutches and what they're all about and uh, how to rebuild them, that sort of stuff. So uh, let's uh, move the camera around the other way and uh, I'll go through that. Okay, let's go through all the bits and bobs we needed to do that job. So uh, starting from here is our uh, EP2 grease. It's, uh, it's a marine grease, water resistant. Uh, greases in this clutch is, is quite fussy. So make sure you use the proper grease, EP2 water resistant grease. Uh, I use the Suzuki stuff because uh, it's easy to get, uh, but there are other, other brands in that too. So use that, uh, 2.5 Allen key, 3.5 Allen key, your 243 Loctite, the blue one. Used our screwdriver, just put the grease in, our 32 mil uh, half inch drive socket to get the cap off, our Jet Surf special tool. Although, if you don't have a Jetsu special tool, as I mentioned in the video, just a big square, square blade screwdriver does the job. They work fine. And of course, my Lanox, uh, which I use to lubricate the gears. So, pretty simple tools. Um, I will do a little bit of a rundown on how to do this actually in the board as well. I've got a service job to do shortly. Uh, I'll do a video on uh, actually servicing as a clutch inside the board. You don't have to pull the engine out to, to do this particular job. It can be done on the board. And uh, the next video I do will will do that. So. Uh, at this stage, what we'll do now is we'll go through the different clutches and the different models because that was a DFI. Uh, there's actually three different clutches for different models. So I'm going to run through those and the kits, how to recondition them, that sort of stuff. So uh, we'll do that next. Okay, so here we are. So this is our three different clutch setups that uh, JetSurf have had over the years. Uh, the one closest to me is the one we did today. Um, it is the later model one. Uh, has the bigger one-way bearing in it, which is uh, pressed in. So to recondition these ones, you've actually got to pull the seals and bearings out and press the, uh, the bearing in and out. Now, JetSurf don't supply a replacement kit for these, so you've got to buy the complete gear assembly. Uh, I have sourced these bearings locally, um, so what I can do is I can press this out, replace the bearings and seals, and recondition your old ones. 
uh, will save you about 100 bucks Australian uh, on that setup. So that can be done. But if you're just buying direct from JetSurf, if you've got a bad clutch, you, uh, you definitely need to buy the whole gear assembly. Um, the other thing you want to be careful of is uh, if you're buying a new clutch assembly, make sure the crankshaft's in good condition. If the crankshaft's not in good condition, there's no sense putting a, a new starter gear on there. And uh, as we saw in the video earlier, you just check the crankshaft service for any damage or wear. And uh, we'll go through it in a couple of the other ones. So that's the, uh, that's the clutch. Now that's, that clutch was fitted to boards from 2007 till new. So some of the late model carbureted ones and through the DFI. So the next one over, this, is, uh, this was only run for a short period of time, but uh, this run from sort of 2016 through 2017, um, most, the most uncommon one. But you'll see the difference is uh, the really big uh, end cap on the seal setup. So the end cap's quite large on that one, so you can identify that's a bigger one, and it has a big bearing in the end. So you'll see the difference though now in the clutches. So what they did between uh, 2016, 2017, to the new ones, they changed the crankshaft. And what they actually did is they changed this crankshaft journal size. So, and as you can see, if you put the old one on there, it's, it's loose, it doesn't fit. So the idea is that was set up for that style of bearing. And you can see the difference in size and uh, the amount of uh, cranking power that new bearing would have in comparison to the old one. So that's why they upgraded it when they went to the DFI and the later model engines. So when you're ordering a clutch kit, you've got to work out which one you've got. So the best way to identify it is obviously, first thing to do is, is get it apart and whether you see one of the small bearings in it, which they will come out, or the bigger bearings, which are pressed in. Then from there, you've obviously got uh, your two bearings either side and your seal. Now again, these kits are readily available from JetSurf as a bearing and seal kit. I do keep them here locally as well. Um, so these ones are rebuildable. So you can just push the bearings and seals out. It's just a matter of flicking the seal out, uh, knocking the bearing out of the end, and that little uh, spray clutch comes out. So that's the middle ones. Now the older boards, now these were, uh, these were quite unique in the sense that these two clutches here were greased. When, so you use your EP2 grease. The older boards, they were oiled, and as you can see here, so as you see here, Jets have supplied a special oil, which really it's a, it's a light uh, machine oil, so uh, hydraulic fluid, automatic transmission fluid type uh, type oil. So if you, can't, if you don't have any uh, auto transmission fluid to do or hydraulic fluid would do fine, but it's a very lightweight oil as you can see. And they supplied uh, this little syringe and plunger which screwed into the crank. So the difference in the crankshafts, as you can see, the, the two newer ones had a flat surface with a thread in the end. And the older one, the starter gear assembly or the main gear assembly was actually held on with a nut on a thread. And then to lubricate it, what you did is you undid this little Allen key screw on the end, screw the fitting into the end of the crank, fill the syringe up full of oil, and squirt it in. And as you can see here, you can see this hole ran through to a little uh, hole inside the crank, and the oil was uh, pushed in and around that bearing. And then it had two O-rings either end that sealed it. Uh, and the way you identify this one is obviously when you go to pull the, uh, the front cover off, if you see a nut on the end, it's the earlier one, so that means that it needs lubricating with the oil. Uh, and you'll see here, this crank's pretty, pretty worn. See the damage on the crank? It's all, uh, uh, the case hardening's coming off. It's been affected by corrosion. So that crank um, obviously been replaced because it had issues with, uh, with that bearing. And I believe this one has a crack in it too, so that's come adrift. So that one's a, a crank I found laying up the back. So there's your, there's your three clutches. Um, as I said, I can supply kits for all these three clutches. These other these kits for the, the earlier model are available directly from JetSurf. Uh, the kits for the 2017 and later, um, I can supply, but you can only buy the gear assembly out of JetSurf. So that um, that's a bit of a saving here, especially if you're in Australia. I can help you out with that. So that gives you a bit of insight of the whole clutch arrangement. Okay, the only other thing now we need to touch base on is uh, when you actually assemble these kits. Uh, <laughs> There's a bit of a trap. This is obviously a one-way bearing, so it can only go in a certain way. 
So if you get that bearing in the wrong way, what will happen is when you hit the starter motor, it will actually freewheel um, and won't start at all. So when you assemble the, um, the one-way bearing, just make sure you get it in the same way as the other one came out. You can do a little test on it if you like. Um, as you can see, I'll grab this motor here. The, the one-way bearing freewheels anti-clockwise and locks clockwise. So make sure it's freewheeling anti-clockwise. Um, you can do a quick test on that. You can actually uh, put the bearing into the uh, gear assembly first uh, and do a little test, make sure it's in the right way. But the, the smartest thing is just have a look to see which way it goes in. And you'll see the sprags actually lean at a certain angle uh, with those. And if you're doing one of these, um, from what I remember, the, the, uh, the printed surface of the bearing goes towards the seal uh, in the pressed out one. So that's something I do when I'm here. But the other thing you're going to need, obviously, this particular bearing assembly, as you can see, it's spring loaded. And you can see it springs when you go on. So when that's assembled in the clutch assembly, it's, it's obviously not as flexible as that. So what we need to do is, is this is a special tool, which is available through myself in JetSurf. That sits into the end of the crank. I'll screw that in like that. And what that does, that helps align that clutch when you're pushing it on. Uh, I've tried it without. It's almost impossible to get that clutch bearing on without that little tool. So if you haven't got the tool and you're ordering the kit, make sure you get the, uh, the, the tool as well. So that works for that one. Now with the, uh, the older model one, it's a different setup again. So basically this one, you have the, the thread and taper. So if you're trying to put the bearing on there, it's going to get caught. So you have this other tool, which slips on there. Again, screw it in place. And what that does, again, just allows that to taper and go on. So uh, be aware, uh, different tools with different kits. And without that tool, very difficult to get the, uh, the bearing on. So uh, if you're ordering any of that sort of stuff, let me know. I can supply that, uh, that little tool as well. As you can see, they're, uh, they're different styles. So, all right, very good. Okay, guys, well, that's it for today. Um, I hope that's been helpful. There's, uh, there's quite a bit uh, as far as all these clutches and whatnot go, so that'll give you a bit of an insight on, on how it all works and how to best maintain them and, uh, and keep your board running. So uh, what I'll do, uh, the next couple of videos, we'll get into uh, top-end overhauls and a few more technical bits and pieces. But for now, uh, thanks for watching, and um, please subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.